As we reported earlier this week, the Christian ministry Exodus International is closing its doors. Exodus tried to help gay men and women through what's known as reparative therapy, which holds that sexual orientation can be changed with God's help. In an announcement on its website, Exodus President Alan Chambers apologized for promoting reparative therapy. The statement says in part, I am sorry for the pain and hurt many of you have experienced. I am sorry that some of you spent years working through the shame and guilt you felt when your attractions didn't change. Do you now believe that it's possible to change your sexual orientation? No, I don't. Alan Chambers, who was the president of Exodus, his words are used over and over and over in the gay media that 99.9% .9 of people do not change. And uh, of course, closed down what was at that time the largest network of Christian ministries that helped people overcome homosexuality. What a lot of people don't hear from that is that a lot of those ministries remained intact and continued to do the work of ministry on the front lines and do see people changed. You know, I've been, I'm an old guy now, but I've been in this line of work for 35 years uh, since I got saved. And so I know a lot of these players and one thing that's consistent that I find with people who say they can't change or that change um, doesn't happen is they're very traumatized. Uh, they have a lot of brokenness in their background. And because of that, they continue to medicate the pain of their life with pornography, fantasy, comparison, rejection, insecurity, masturbation. Those are themes that we see over and over and over with the person that says, I can't change. And they, yeah, they're, they're tired as, um, you know, was proclaimed at the conference this last summer, a gay conference, you know, we're tired, we're tired, we're tired. So we're going to be gay and we're going to be Christian and we're tired of the church not accepting us. Well, they're, they're tired of the battle. And, um, and Jesus has, uh, has made it very clear there's a cross in this battle. And yes, this is a particular cross that's very difficult. So when this 99.9% .9 of uh, people don't change, that got me thinking we had 25 years of client folders stored that we had actually tracked. And I thought, where are these people? What, what does change really look like? We were able to contact 500 people. Of the 500 people, we were able to get 185. And of that 185, bottom line, the last two questions, 72 to 73% of the people that actually gave at least one year of their life and received pastoral care counseling were able to find lasting freedom from homosexuality. Now, what's great about this is um, LendCare uh, just put out a report, and in that report, it shows that these three APA doctors who have been doing a similar study on religious men who were seeking sexual orientation change efforts found that the same kind of numbers, about 70% were able to make a, a, a real shift. And of course, this is not popular. The gospel, uh, the call for repentance is just not popular. And because of that, there's a lot of pushback and even hatred towards the message that you really can change. If you accept Jesus today, you can be part of God's family. We're out here saying that God loves you and you can have a relationship with God. That doesn't mean that that has to change that I'm gay. I can still be gay. But he doesn't want you to stay that way. How many he doesn't accept me for what I so there's this idea that, you know, we just need to give up because this, this thing isn't going to change for people. So what that does is that strikes right at the very heart of the gospel. Either you have a gospel conforming to godliness and is transformative in power, or you're religious and you have a gospel that has no power. They deny the power 
of the Lord Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit to change lives. I've changed. I really have changed. I, I don't lust after men. I don't want to have sex with men. And I'm married to a woman uh, for 32 years, going on 33 years. Now, that's not necessarily a promise that a, a particular person, let's say a gay identified man who's been living uh, as a homosexual for 30 years, it would be disingenuous. It actually would be even unkind of me to tell this man that he can have a hope of total eradication of any kind of temptation. But I can and have seen many young men um, over the, you know, the, the 30 years that I've been here. Uh, I've seen young men that they've never acted out. They have a lot of mixed emotions and feelings and attractions. They come and they receive ministry and they go on and guess what? their same-sex attraction is eradicated. So you've got the 18-year-old who's never acted out and the man who had lived in homosexuality for 30 years, those extremes. Well, you're gonna have the, that kind of level of what we would say a sanctifying process or a process of change and holiness in the church at large. So if you have a life-determining behavior like attraction to children or uh, stealing, and, and you've been living that way for years, um, there is, yes, the possibility you're gonna probably struggle to the day you die. Uh, but here's the amazing thing about grace. Where sin abounds, grace abounds more. Grace is actually this power of the, the very presence of Jesus to come to live inside of you. So the spirit of grace gives us the ability to say no, to unrighteousness and to sin and to live godly. Now we know that if you continue to change your behavior over time, your neural pathways in your brain will actually change as well. We have um, um, a video series we've used called the Conquer Series, and they've actually had brain scans of men's minds who overcame addiction to pornography. And when they broke away from the addiction of pornography and their behavior changed, actually their brain waves and their brain patterns started changing. So there is actual science on this. Uh, the, the more you change your behavior, the more you're going to physically change. And, um, and this is right in line with the scripture. It says Romans 12 verses one and two. I beseech you therefore brethren, by the mercies of God to present your body to present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him. Therefore, in doing so, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind. And so right there in scripture, we also see that in the renewing of the mind, by yielding your body, by actually consecrating your body, your life can change. And we also see it in Ephesians chapter four. It says to be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on these behaviors and put off these behaviors. The scripture actually speaks to even what now science is showing us that yes, change is possible. For some people, it may be difficult. It may be an arduous, painful process, but freedom has never been the promise of an absence of struggle. Freedom actually means in Jesus Christ, you will have struggle, but you can overcome it. You can rise above it. That's what real freedom is.